We are back here at Jets camp from a guy who we all love watching. He flies around the football field and wants to harm people in a good way. And I'm talking about Quincy Williams, who got screwed from not being a pro bowler last year. Let me say that. Quincy, Evan Roberts, Tiki Barber, thank you very much for coming on. What's good? Man. What's good? Thanks for having me. That's all right. Pro Bowl don't mean nothing when you're all pro. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah, but I still want that stamp, too. Right. Right? I, you know, I, I need I, both of them. I was going to ask you that, like, because in a weird sure. way, all pro is more impressive than Pro Bowl. Right. So did that make it like, ah, screw the Pro Bowl. It doesn't even nah, matter. Nah, I'm one of the ones, like, I set my goals, and I want to check all my goals out. So all pro, Pro Bowl still on my goal list, so it don't matter. How much did you weigh in high school? Man, high school, I was also a swimmer too, though. So Get it was, out. Really? For real. I'm a dream Olympic swimmer, so be honest, man. I ain't touched two, 200. Probably. I was small, man. Really? I was small. Really? So how did you evolve into this guy? Uh, really just um, when I got to college, man, just like locking in on yeah. the uh, program and stuff. Uh, Murray State took a chance on me, and that was the biggest thing. So it's like now forming into a linebacker. Uh, actually – Decided to just do one sport because it was kind of hard losing weight to swim, but then gaining weight during the summertime trying to play get ready for football season. Right. So actually, when I locked in on one sport, that's when I kind of picked my weight it's, up. It's funny you say that because when I, me and my twin brother were choosing schools, one of the caveats that we had, we we talked to the coaches about it, was like, you got to let us run track. I love track and field. I want to run track, and eventually. I had to decide: am I going to be a long jumper and weigh 180 pounds, or yeah. I'm going to be a running back and weigh 200 pounds? You wanted to do both in I, college? Or I didn't want to do both in both? college. I was doing both in high school, yeah. and my grandma was like, hey, this kind of a lot because the meal plan would change, and I'd be like, I need more protein. <laughs> then it goes to like, I need less protein, more vegetables. <laughs> 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 so she made me choose probably like 10th grade. I had to end up choosing. That's cool. I didn't. I had what no made idea. you choose football over swimming? So my, my siblings played football, so it was right. one of those things where I'm like, all right, I can still connect with my siblings also, and then also I can go to school for it too, though. If you had picked swimming in this alternate universe, you think you would have won a gold uh, two weeks ago or oh, last week? Sure. I would have won a gold. My <laughs> objective is always going to win the gold. <laughs> hey, but I heard that uh, flag football is going to be in 2028, so right. I still might get a chance right. to win a gold. You're, you're in on that if they allow you? Yeah, for real. I think you have a better chance at that. <laughs> I mean, do we have black swimmers? <laughs> I don't Man, I don't know. I think there's a couple. I don't think I watched it that much. <laughs> Quincy, there's a, there, there's a rumor going around that excites me so much if it's true. All right? It was reported on NFL Network by Peter Schrager, that the Jets have this wrinkle up their sleeve with the new kickoff rule that you are going to be the kicker. Man, I talked to Boyer about it a couple of times, just to let him know, like, I kicked in high school, you know, I might be able to get it there, you know. But he was like, I kind of like a positional kick. I haven't really tried that practice. I might have to try it a couple of times uh, after practice, get a couple of them in, but I'm open for it. It makes a lot of sense because you get another tackler on the field. We know how good you are. And if you can just get it into that zone area, like the 10-yard line or wherever that is. The landing zone inside the 20. Yeah. Yeah, Then it it totally makes sense. So this is something that's not – legitimately going to happen it's nah, more something you're fantasizing about more something i'm fantasizing about then also it's an extra play too though so <laughs> <laughs> i used to always get my that tackle way. sheet up right that'd be the same way with me can i get on the field and get some you punt feel me? can i get another touch they kick me out field goal block right. and stuff so i'm like all right i got another chance to get on the field wait, now wait, wait a second i gotta be fair about this if you were going to kick you wouldn't tell us because it's supposed to be by surprise <laughs> so good. can you blink twice if this is already gonna happen <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's talk about your breakout season last year. It felt like you were on every single play. What clicked for you? I know it was cool because you're playing with your brother, obviously. Right. But what clicked with you that made it, you so comfortable in this system? Really, it was more like locking in instead of just playing off ability. One of those things was like, all right, let's see how do I fit into this defense as far as like – uh, as far as like the big scheme type thing. So knowing that, all right, I got my buzz play outside of me. I got my hook play outside of me. So if I take my shot right here, where am I going to take my shots type thing? So it's really just locking in on the playbook. And then also working with CJ on anticipating plays. That helped me out a whole lot. Right. So the game has slowed down really. And then uh, it was a lot more fun because, I mean, like I know the uh, tight end motion. Then it's kind of funny because I'd be joking around, be like, hey, come on in, come on in. <laughs> then he ended up coming in. And I was like, all right, just run right. You yeah. know, so just laughing joking about it and stuff like that so it just made the game more fun really yeah how great has it been playing with your brother you know i never i never got a chance to do it other than the pro bowls which they don't even play games anymore but what was it what's it like i mean that's gotta be man it's amazing it's amazing because like you said it's a person that uh that's really like your wife like family's your Mm -hmm. wife so it's more a person that like when you get constructive criticism from your brother it's coming from a place where you know for a fact like 
it's a pure place because let's talk let's talk about it when we was younger we played on the same team but mm -hmm. also we dreamed about the same thing at the same house so it's like he know how much i want this the same way i know how much he want this so the constructive criticism is real and then also when i see him make a play i get to celebrate with him right yeah, then yeah. so we kind of do each other celebrations too when we each other make plays <laughs> do you also <laughs> bicker because your brothers like do you always have the, the sibling rivalry continuing oh we got the sibling rivalry right now i got bragging rights i can't wait to the family dinner because i got uh <laughs> I got what thirty seventh in the hundred. Oh, that's right. 30, that's yeah, right. so yeah. I got bragging rights uh, from <laughs> last year, though. It's amazing because, and this shows my ignorance, but it probably shows what you knew you can do when you were cut by Jacksonville and the Jets signed you, and it was after one of those like pre Labor Day cuts, and they mm -hmm. brought you in. I was like, "Who the heck is he?" I got oh, he's Quinnen's brother, I guess. Yeah. And I looked at your stats, and I looked at how many games you played. I said, "Ah, eh, you never know." And then watching you, I was like, "What? The, how did the Jaguars miss on this?" So what happened upon your arrival two years ago that turned you from what you were in Jacksonville to a guy, and I said it at the top, who I enjoy watching more than almost anybody else mm -hmm. on defense because of the way you play the game. What kind of changed for you? It was really one of those things where, like, the coaching staff actually like, leaned into my superpower. So um, we got here. Uh, Rudy was my line, my first linebacker coach, but then he ended up leaving the Jaguar. So it was like getting a different coach every single year, switching scheme and stuff like that. Then when I got here, I came back into a scheme where I was comfortable in where I can roam around, where I'm free to, like, run around and stuff like that. And I get to use my superpower and things like that. So when I got here, more just locking in on the plays and things like that. And then also I got a coach who already knows how to – basically teach me the position because I'm going to be honest with you, I was a safety coming out of school and yeah. it was coming from a small school. So right. I really didn't understand the linebacker position. We joke about it all the time. I didn't even know what a pulling guard was. <laughs> I didn't even know I was supposed to go back with the pulling guard. <laughs> Follow that guy. He'll you take remember? you to the play. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> So that was the biggest thing. When I got here, I mean, I got a coach that knows how to coach me, and then also I'm in a scheme where it suits my superpower. Yeah, let me let me jump to the a league wide thing. They they just instituted a couple of new rules. I think the one that affects you potentially the most is the hip drop tackle. I don't and use that one. I yeah, like the hip back. Like right, mine. and so it's interesting because. I was at the CBS um, NFL meetings yesterday, and we were trying to talk through it and why it happens, and you know it hurts so many players. That's why they actually, that's why they decided to ban it. But when you think about, you know, hitting a running back or hitting a wide receiver or even hitting a quarterback, it's almost unintentional, but that could happen. Do, were you guys think about it, or were you coached differently this preseason because of that new rule? Um, really. That one is more of one of those things where we're incorporating what we call the gator roll. So it's the same type thing, but you're not swinging your feet up under. You're more like grabbing them and twisting. So it's more like a wrap tap on and twisting. That's it's a lot more safer for you, and then it's also a lot more safer for that player also. So instead of, like, dropping your weight down on his leg, you're dropping your weight next to him, and you're twisting. So, like, you're, you're twisting his whole body yeah. and not just, you feel me, like one but you, body but part. But you guys were taught that. Right, what? the, the you Gator were, the roll. You guys yeah, yeah. were taught we were taught that. the yeah. Gator roll. So it's basically like one of those things where you go back to little league, where it's the fundamental football, like the rights of tackling, using the right side shoulder, keeping your head up, type thing, and then also. I got a lot of unnecessary roughness penalties that, uh, last year just because they're, I guess the league wasn't really used to having a person who's hit hard every single time. So it's another one of those things uh, where it's like your target zone, where it's like players are know you're a hard hitter, so they're embracing for the tackle, so they're dropping down. So it's knowing that, hey, that they're going to drop down, so you have to lower your tackle, I mean your, uh, your hitting point. Right, right. So you so you're not going high on yeah. them and, and getting those those head to head yeah. you know personal fouls that are devastating obviously because right. it's, it's obviously, not on purpose. obviously to your wallet is yeah. devastating but it's also <laughs> well, because it's fifteen yard penalties right yeah kills the drive for real make the drive a lot longer especially when it's like third down and we oh, think you're off the yeah. field then it's like oh crap here we go <laughs> yeah. we're talking to Quincy Williams the thirty seventh best player in the NFL according <laughs> to NFL Network uh, this defense I remember last year DJ Reed said eighty five Bears esque. What are your expectations for how good this defense can be this year in 24? The standard, that's kind of like our mindset. Um, last year, it was more like um, we're putting ourselves where we want to be. This year is more like building off what we did last year and keeping it a standard. So last year, our mindset going in was being the number one defense. This year, it's the same mindset also. But uh, most importantly, each position group, um, each position group basically wants to be number one, which mm -hmm. means it takes our defense to number one, which also helps out our offense too because they get more positions on the field. So those games where we think like, 
offense, all right, don't worry about it. Just give us a field goal. <laughs> we good. You feel me? We can win the game 3-0. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, it's just, you're now a couple of years with, with Brick, uh, Coach Oldberg, and how has it evolved? Right? How has this defense started to become – really into it. You said superpowers. Yeah. There's so many guys on your t- defensive side of the ball that feel like superheroes, you know, in the football sense. They're great at what they do, from Saws to your brother to you, obviously. Hey, how are you guys evolving as the years start to pound on? The biggest thing is the conversations we have, really. So it's not like a you coach, I play type mindset with Britt. The biggest thing, he comes in every single week, like, what y'all feeling? And then also we hit something in practice. We go over it and meet him, like, hey, what made you do this? So he's not one of those coaches that's on the sideline. It's like, well, I seen this from the sideline. Mm-hmm. He actually, when we get to the sideline, it's like, what y'all seeing out there? What are you guys seeing out there? So then we're playing in the his superpower, so he know what to call and he know what we like to run. That's kind of like those things where, like I said, you play into our superpowers. Right. Like, hey, we feeling comfortable doing this. So we not really thinking you just running the hidden. Three, four years now living in New Jersey, New York. Grew up in Alabama. Do you feel like a true New Yorker, New Jerseyer now? Man, I'm gonna be honest. I don't think I'm gonna feel like nah, that. I like, I like, he's I, I like going back it. home, man. I, can I like feel going it. back home. You <laughs> feel me? I like the land. I like the grass, man. You get here. We got grass man. here. We got land. You go into New York, man. I ain't seen a tree in New York <laughs> <laughs> in the city. <laughs> so it's a little intimidating when you go into it's the just concrete jungle, as they say. Man, it's a fast. It's just yeah. fast. Everybody moving. Ain't a lot of, you know, you hold a dough for one person, you're going to end up holding a dough for a lot of people. <laughs> so the, the and you're Southern supposed to do that down kinda, south. You're, you're supposed, supposed to do that The Southern hospitality is kind of right. different. Like, you hold that dough for one person, it might be about 50. You might be standing there for a little minute. <laughs> well, I can't wait until week one in San Francisco when the Jets win the coin toss and they defer. And yeah. out comes Quincy <laughs> to kick it off with the new kickoff. Yeah. I think it's going to be awesome. I love it. I hope it happens. Thank you very much for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me again, y'all. Appreciate you, dude. Appreciate it. Quincy Williams, all pro in 2023. We got more coming up live from Jets Camp. Evan and Tiki here on The Fan. 